In today's video, we're gonna take a look at a very popular concept in multi threading, namely deadlocks. Um, I want to go over deadlocks at a very basic level so that you understand when all these can happen. To start off, we're gonna create a very simple mutex here at the top. So I'm gonna say pthread underscore mutex underscore t. Um, let's say it's called mutex fuel. And I'm gonna initialize this guy. So pthread mutex. And there we go. And suppose we also have some fuel that we're gonna work with uh, between all the threads. We're gonna create here a uh, number of eight threads using the generic code that we have used so far. There's nothing special about it. In the routine itself, let's say we just um, fill up the gas station with some fuel and say just add 50 gallons of fuel. Well, because it is a shared resource, of course, we're gonna have to lock it to use the mutex to actually modify this shared resource. I'm gonna say mutex lock, uh, mutex fuel, and of course, down below, unlock. And um, now if we try to print this uh, value here in the main thread after we have uh, joined all the threads, I'm gonna say here fuel, percent d backslash n uh, fuel, and let's also say incremented fuel to like that. Now, if we try to launch this, we should get some message the, on the screen and it should be all nice. Yep. So we got 50 at the beginning. We had eight threads, all incremented with 50. So that's 50 times eight plus another 50. That should be 450. So that's correct. Nice. Uh, now, a very simple example of a deadlock is when you lock a mutex uh, twice. So if you, for example, for some reason, you, instead of uh, locking it only once, you actually lock it twice on the same thread. If you try to launch that, you're gonna notice that the program never finishes execution and we're just stuck forever and ever. Because of course the lock has already been taken and if you try to take it a second time, you're gonna be left with nothing. And uh, Petra doesn't know that uh, it's been, the, the lock is actually owned by the same thread, right? Unless you do something a bit more fancy. Uh, we're gonna take a look at that in the next video. But right now you have to realize that of course, locking it a uh, mutex a second time in a thread is gonna block it and it's gonna block everything. Okay, that's a very simple example. That's nothing too strange. You would expect that it's straightforward. Yeah. But what happens if you have two mutexes, right? So you have, instead of just mutex fuel, let's say we have another one that we create here and suppose it's called mutex water. Right? We have another uh, mutex for water and we have water here that I don't know, has like 10 liters. And of course, when I initialize it, and let's also print it on the screen. I'm gonna say here, water, water. And suppose you always want to fill the water in such a way that you have the same amount of fuel as uh, water. So you would say here, fuel plus equals 50, and then you say here, water equals actually fuel, right? But that means that you also have to lock this, uh, this mutex water. So I'm gonna have to, instead of just locking the fuel, I'm gonna have to lock the mutex for the water. I'm gonna do here mutex water and of course unlock it once we are done. And in here let's say something like this. Incremented fuel to that and set water. Water to percent D. I'm gonna pass in here water. Simple enough. If I try to launch this, of course we're gonna get the expected result. Right? We're gonna get fuel to 100, set that, set that, and the fuel and the water levels are the same all the time. That makes sense. That's very straightforward. Nothing too strange about it. And this works fine. We don't have any issues with it. We, it cannot actually lead into a deadlock. The issue is when we have multiple locks locked in different orders. Suppose for whatever reason, I'm going to have here a just random, but it could be for some other calculations that if 
uh, something something I'm gonna just have here if rand is equal to zero then you lock them in this order but if rand gives us one or something that uh, when divided by two gives us a remainder of one then we actually lock them in the different order now this is obviously something that you won't do but in a really large program think like hundreds of lines of code you might actually encounter this and this is a very big mistake if i try to launch this we might not hit it we might not have a deadlock right and i might be here just launching this same uh, threads over and over and over and we're not gonna hit it yet so if for whatever reason we have one thread that is executing this side and the other one that is executed this else block um what's what could happen well there are more there are ma many situations where first the first thread executes the, these two lines and then this one executes the other two lines and uh we have a situation where this kind starts first and so on and so forth i want to focus on the situation where the first thread executes the first line of code and then the second thread comes along and executes the, the first line of code on its own block. What happens then? Well, I have here a little diagram that we can take a look at. Well, if we first lock this first one, this first mutex fuel, well, then we mean, I mean, the first thread acquired the first mutex fuel, right? Okay, so it did acquire the fuel mutex, that's nice. But then the second thread comes along and it acquires the water mutex. So it goes here and says, okay, water mutex, here I am. Suppose all the mutexes are unlocked. There's no, there's no other threads executing at the same time. So now what happens next? Well, the first thread is waiting for the water mutex, but the water mutex is acquired. So it's going to just wait, right? So I'm going to have here, let's say, it's waiting. So the first thread is waiting. And just wait, 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 wait till somebody, till the thread that acquired the water mutex unlocks it. Okay, that's fair enough. But then the second thread comes along and executes this line of code, which says, okay, wait until you have the mutex fuel unlocked. Well, we can take a look here and you can see that thread one actually has the fuel mutex. So since this is an issue, well, the, the, the second thread is like, okay, well, I'm going to wait. We cannot do anything else. There's that. And what do you know? You have a situation where both threads are waiting and they are both of them waiting for each other's unlock. This is what a deadlock is really. And it doesn't have to be only two mutexes. It could be three, four, five, however many you want, however many threads you want. But at a certain point, you have every thread waiting for the other thread and everything is just stuck. Um, if we, to simulate that uh, behavior here, if we launch this again, we're not gonna get it unless we actually add a sleep here after this uh, Peter Mutex lock. At that point, we might actually hit a deadlock because then uh, after locking this, the other thread might have time to actually lock the other one. So if we try to run this, we might actually get a deadlock. It is not 100% for sure, but now oh, look at that. As we can notice, we actually did hit a deadlock and nothing executes anymore. Right? That is because of the situation that I talk about here. So you're gonna have to be careful at the order at which you're locking the mutexes. Here, the deadlock really occurs simply because in some of the threads, I'm locking them in this order, where I say fuel water, and in the other threads, I'm locking them in the other order, where I say water fuel. And there is a really, really, really small gap where two threads could come in and deadlock the whole system. And this is a no-go. So I'm gonna have to, to actually prevent this, or we have to do really, for us is just to comment out the else block and just have them all execute this code. But for you, it might be actually more difficult 
because as I said these usually occur when you have a lot of uh, threads and a much bigger code base. Right, so these are the two examples that I wanted to go over uh, regarding deadlocks. These are very basic, very simple and I hope you understood them. You should always keep an eye out for these and they can be quite tricky to figure out although the result is pretty simple you just don't get anything on the screen but you're gonna have to uh, logically map the code in your head so that you know when you locked the mutexes when you unlocked them if the order is correct and it's always the same because otherwise this could happen. Alright, I really hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. The source code for this, as always, will be found on our website. You can check uh, the link in the description below. Take care. Bye.